my name's Gordon from Drayson Design. And I'm Taylor from The Creative Tinker. And welcome to This Week with Taylor and Gordon, a weekly podcast and vidcast where we talk about things that have affected our businesses over the last seven days. And welcome back. We apologise for not being with you last week. Um, life got in the way, really, didn't it? Yeah, so we had um, Jonathan, uh, or Permaslug, or he's actually rebranded himself to Jonathan um, now, but he um, is travelling around Europe, and he came to London, so I got to see him. Um, we went to see some shows and went out um, just exploring London and things like that and getting food, and it was really nice. Yeah, and that's why we weren't available, so... Oh, excuse me. Hey, chi Hey, chi Oh, pardon me. I do apologise. Um, so yes, uh, that's the reason why we weren't with you last week. However, lots of things have happened during have. this week. Um, so first of all, some news. I uh, am a member of the Magic Circle, as you probably already know. And on Monday, this last Monday, we had the Close-Up Magician of the Year competition, uh, which is a uh, a type of magic where you do it sort of one-to-one -one or one-to-a-small group of people. So it's very close up, hence the name. And uh, it's a very prestigious uh, award. It's one of the, uh, probably the biggest award that the Magic Circle do. Uh, and it's a big competition. And on the last Monday when we had it, I was asked to be a judge. Uh, one of the magical judges, which is um, a very big honour. And I'd like to thank the Magic Circle for for asking me. It was uh, it was great to do it. Um, I basically got to uh, to watch the six acts, and then there were two other uh, very prominent magicians who were judges, and we also had some lay people. Now we call them lay people because they're muggles, basically, so non magical people. Uh, the audience, the type of people we yeah. perform for, uh, and they were in the room as well. And there were two judges from that group who also got to say who they thought was the best and then the magician judges we were judging it on different things like the entertainment value the magic skill and so forth and uh, we had uh, three winners well we had first second and third and they were all very worthy uh, it was it was very very nice to be asked so thank you to John Conway who asked me and also thank you to the magic circle so that's that um, what other news do we have? Uh, I'm not sure there is any at the moment. We'll come back to that if I think of any. So, do you want to start today? Yeah. So, uh, back in October, I went to America and I um, bought uh, something called an Upright Go 2. Now, I bought this from the Apple store. It's not an Apple product, but it's one of the products they have on the shelves in, the, in their stores. And what it does, it's a posture corrector. So what happens is it has an app and it sticks onto the back of your neck. And every time you are basically slouching, uh, it will vibrate. Um, it doesn't vibrate as soon as you kind of, um, you know, you, you're, you're slouching or you bend down or whatever. But after maybe 15 seconds or whatever you set it to, it will vibrate to say, you know, look, you need to sit up straight. Um, and it's a really good um, little tool, little gadget that I, that I got. And I, I was using it for quite a while and then the battery decided, you know, it just wasn't charging or anything like that. So I reached out to the company and said, you know, look, it's not charging. Are you able to do anything? And they sent me a brand new one, which was very nice of them. Um, so I've been wearing that this week and, um, you know, realizing that my posture is quite bad. You know, when I'm walking uh, Marty in the mornings, I normally think I am, you know, sitting up straight, but I'm not and it's vibrating quite a lot of the time you're sitting up when you go walking well i'm i'm standing up straight should i say <laughs> um and also when i'm sitting at my desk as well you know it vibrates when i'm hunched over and i'm not sitting in my chair properly as i should um and it's a good reminder and it's you know it should be one of those gadgets that you don't really need for a long time because obviously once you've kind of uh, corrected your posture you shouldn't need it okay you know and if you're if you're it's not vibrating at all, you know, for like a week or so. That would suggest that you have, you know, pretty good posture. But it's a nice kind of gadget. And there's an app that tells you how long you've been sitting up straight for or, or, or standing up straight. Um, and, you know, it gives you kind of a score and you can kind of see. Um, but like the activity rings you get for your watch. 
um, and you can see each day how you're progressing, how many minutes you 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 uh, had good posture. Um, yeah, it's quite it's quite fun. What's really funny is I'm sitting here and I can hear it vibrating while he's discussing yeah. what happens, which is really funny. Um, so have you have you done some research on this? What what is the benefits of having a good posture? Um, it's probably just lots of things, you know, health health reasons. Um, yeah. What was your what was your main reason for purchasing it? Was it just that it was a gadget that you thought um, I feel like my posture should be better? Yeah, it's I I notice it sometimes when I'm especially when I'm coding, I will very much hunch over my desk because just my brain is going and your your hands yeah. are down on the keyboard, aren't they? Yeah, and so I realise that I do uh, have you know bad posture sometimes when I'm sitting at at my desk, and I thought if I'm going to be sitting at my desk, which I do a lot. I should probably, you know, be sitting properly um, because it's going to help me as I get older to, you know, your age and things like that. I don't want to be having a bad back or whatever. Yeah, um, ancient. Yeah. yeah. But you also have a standing desk. So are you using that for standing uh, at the moment? I haven't haven't uh, recently, but yeah, something that I, I do um, use every now and again. when I Because I know with your... Um, with your illness that you have it's it's been difficult but have you got to a, a point now where you think standing would would be possible or you yeah and I, I enjoy standing for things like meetings um although i've been told that i make people feel seasick because i kind of rock back and forth mm. um just because it's you know you, you keep you keep yourself moving but i have a, a standing mat that i sit on which has helped a lot um, and was one of the reasons why I couldn't stand up for long periods because standing on, you know, just carpet, I guess, is, isn't good for your feet. Work. Well, solid surface, isn't it? And this mat is sort of a bit more buoyant. Yeah, it's a bit like a membrofoam mat. It's like one of those um, things you get in a children's playground, isn't it? So if they fall off, they, they don't sort hurt of, themselves. It's, it's a bit softer. A little that, bit like yeah. that. Yeah. So you, you sway backwards and forwards, do you? Yeah, or side to side, it depends. So now you need to get another sensor... To stop you swaying. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to have sensors all over your body. I my own gimbal. <laughs> Keeps me balanced and upright. Keeps you upright. Perfect. <laughs> so that was nice of the company, though. They um, they, they saw there was an issue and uh, and sorted it out, which is yeah. what they should be and doing. They did it, you know, very, very quickly. I just emailed them saying they gave me a couple of things to kind of try to, to make sure that, you know, it wasn't just user error. But you know, then, they, then they sent one out. Very good. Oh, that's good. I think these little sensors and these little gadgets that you can get these days really sort of improve habits, I guess. Because your your the whole point of you having this sensor is to, to get you into the habit of of sitting up straight. And in fact, just talking about it, I'm doing it myself now. Yeah, I'm just sitting up straight. Um, so yeah, maybe uh, maybe you need to get um, more sensors once you've worked on one part of your body you <laughs> move on to the next part yeah I, I also looked to see if they had an API sadly they didn't um, <laughs> I would have for your website yeah I would have uploaded it to my website but okay. they didn't have oh, they don't have any documented APIs they probably do internally but probably not ones they want to share with people um, but one thing I have been looking at is the Aura Ring oh yes um, which uh, our friend Mark has one of this. Yes. Uh, and I have another friend um, at the at the, the gym that, that is looking at it. And, yeah, they look really, really cool. Um, you know, they, they are similar to an Apple Watch. You know, they track your sleep and things like that and other parts, um, you know, your, your body water and things like that. And, um, yeah, they can, uh, yeah, track, track your things. And it's just another way. It's supposed to be a lot more accurate. Um, yeah, and the the fact that it's a ring and not a watch means you haven't got to charge it all the time as well because it's, there's no screen. There's no screen, so it takes up a lot less power and it lasts a lot longer. Um, but it has a very specific type of charger, uh, and you need to get the right size as well. As our our uh, friend of our channel, Mark Summers, um, he uh, he got a new charging. Um, device and couldn't remember exactly what ring he had uh, and actually ordered the wrong size so that was a yeah an expensive mistake but I think he probably managed to send it back I hope he did anyway but but yeah I I, I thought they were looking good as well and they've got an API uh, they do yes I, I have looked at that um, and they do have an API which I could use if I wanted to and I guess with with sort of when you've got uh, medical 
conditions, having these sensors and sort of being alerted ahead of time when there's something wrong can can really benefit you. Yeah, I, I regularly get told by my Apple Watch that my my heart rate, my, my resting heart rate is quite high, um, which isn't good. I, I'll be sitting down at my, my desk and it'll say, your heart rate is 190 BPM. And I'm like... 190 seems very high. Yeah, but it's just very high. It might not be 190, but it was very high. And I regularly, at the moment, because I'm slowly getting back into the you know exercise and the gym and things like that i'm hitting kind of like 200 bpm when i'm playing tennis or whatever because which is only 10 more than resting when you're sitting at your computer (laughs) no it must not it must be like 110 maybe okay something but yeah i get a notification going you've got a high resting heart rate and oh great right so that's good to keep track of them yeah yeah anything else you want to say no it's everything from me so uh you may have for those who've listened to these podcast or watch the vidcast before you may notice that the sound is slightly different now we did have a samson microphone which we used to have a stand and it went up the side here it came across the top and sort of sat just out of sight about here right above us um and we used to have that going to um the computer so that the the sound was basically coming from the microphone which is a higher quality sound than it would be if it was coming direct from the laptop and after the latest os update the mic stopped working Uh, it wasn't being recognized from the computer and so we stopped using a mic we were just using the inbuilt one from the laptop which was pretty good if you think it wasn't bad It, it it definitely wasn't as good no, of course. But it wasn't bad. You got a lot more ambient sound from the room, um, which is what you would expect when you've got, you know, a laptop, which I'm not entirely sure where the microphone is, but I think it's possibly in the top of the screen. And the screen is only that thick. You know, it's very, very thin. Uh, and so the microphone is also going to be quite small. And it's never going to be the same as a, a dedicated microphone. So with the podcasts that I have been recording recently, which is something that uh, I will uh, announce soon because it's not actually been launched yet, um, but I've been doing a podcast, a a second podcast, not this one, a second one, and uh, I was doing them on Zoom. And again, the, the sound was coming through the computer and I wasn't happy with it. It was just not as good as I want it to be because when people are listening to podcasts the the cleaner the sound the easier it is to listen to it and to understand what's happening so I thought I would invest in a new microphone because the one I had before was like 2009 I think I bought no earlier than that actually maybe early 2000s so yeah it's been a while since I bought that one Uh, so I was looking around to see what there was and there was lots of very expensive ones And I don't mind paying for, you know, expensive microphones if they're going to do the job. But I don't want to pay for something that's very expensive when there's something a lot cheaper that will do the same job. Um, Especially when it's a podcast, because we make no money out of the podcast. You know, we do it because we want to do it and we want to share our knowledge with people. Um, And the new podcast is the same. It's not going to be earning me very much money, if anything. So I didn't want to spend lots and lots, but I did want to make sure I got good sound because quality is important. So I eventually settled on the Elgato Wave 3. Now this is a microphone that is made by the same people uh, as the lights I have. So I've got some Elgato lights. And they originally bought out the Elgato Elgato capture card, which is what they were most well known for. They were, yeah. And that was being used a lot by streamers, wasn't it? When you you plugged it into your Xbox or your PlayStation or something, and it would then send the HDMI signal into your computer uh, and capture it so that you could then stream. Um, And it's one of the... One of the first companies that sort of discovered that this was a a good thing and people wanted it. Uh, And they did really well out of that. Yeah, so they've now got pretty much a whole suite of products and a lineup that all complement each other and all work together. So they've got the lights, they've got the microphone, they've got the capture card. And the Stream Deck, which is something I purchased during uh, lockdown. Um, And this is a little device with buttons on it that you can program. 
and they can do all sorts of things like open applications or mute your microphone or start scenes running in OBS if you're if you're streaming. Uh, it, it's got all sorts of different functions that it can do. And so I thought because I'm using that already and I'm in the Elgato ecosystem, if you like, getting their microphone might give me extra benefits like allowing me to link in with all the other things like Stream Deck. And sure enough, uh, it's got a whole section on the Stream Deck that allows you to basically tap on different buttons and you know mute it or change the gain or, or whatever. Um, and hopefully it's sounding really good. This is the first time we've used it, it is. for this podcast, for This Week With. Um, and you can't see it, but it's just down here. Uh, the one I got, I bought a couple of extras. There's a, a shock mount, uh, which is good because it means if there's any vibrations on the table or um, the stand that's holding the microphone, they don't go through into the mic and make a really horrible sound. And the other thing we have is a pop filter which means that it takes away all the plosives. So when you speak and you say words like pop, you've got that, that gush of air that comes out for making the P sound and a B sound. Uh, and it's, it's sort of like a, a metal grill that's sort of like um, cross, cross hatch, if you like. And it stops that air from coming through to the microphone to stop that. So hopefully you're not getting any plosives and it makes it a lot easier to... To, to, to hear a lot easier on the ears uh, and so yeah that's one of the things that I've recently bought upgrading my tech the other thing I had is I've got some some NAS drives so these are big units with hard drives in them so network area storage and one of my drives had about 10 gigabytes sorry start again 10 terabytes worth of space uh, which I plugged into my main computer and anything that I needed but I didn't need all the time I would offload onto the network drive uh, and it meant I could still get to it it wouldn't be as fast as the inbuilt hard drives but I could still get to it anytime I needed to oh, cool. and because they're network drives there's two advantages one is they're in a RAID system now RAID basically means you've got several hard drives and the data is on is on at least two of the hard drives in your in your RAID stack, uh, which means that when, and not if, when a hard drive goes down, you don't lose any data. Because what you do is you take that drive out, you put a new drive in, it reworks itself out to make sure that all the data is on, on at least two drives. So that as long as you only have one drive failure at any one, any one time, your data will always be safe, which is always a concern with hard drives. Because yes. they do die. They will die at some point. Um, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Um, and the one, uh, the other drive I have is a backup. Uh, and I've been putting um, my movies onto the, the network storage as well so that they're available for all devices in the house. So you can sit there with your iPad or your phone or sitting watching the TV with Apple TV. And you can just pull up one of the films that I've got on DVD without having to get a DVD player. We don't have a DVD player in the house anymore. Well, I have one for, for testing, but we don't have any actual DVD players that we use to watch films anymore. So by having this network storage and having all the films that we, we have on there, we can watch it at any time, which is, which is just great. However, last week, my backup drive and my extended storage both had a drive failure and I took the drives out. And something you may not know is if you go to, these are Seagate drives that I'm using. They're bare three and a half inch SATA drives. That's the tech spec of them. Uh, and if you go to Seagate's website, you can type in the serial number and it will give you the warranty information because these drives have a warranty of normally between three and five years. Okay. And <laughs> so I did that just to see if it was still in warranty. And the warranty expired in 2014. So it's quite a while ago then. Yes, yeah, so I probably got these drives in about 2009-ish, I guess. And they were uh, two terabyte drives. And they were quite expensive at the time. I, in fact, you may have been with me, because I seem to remember we bought them at a computer fair. Yeah. Do you remember? Oh, I'm going to sneeze again. <laughs> hey, achoo. Oh, dear, pardon me. And again. Hey, achoo. I've been 
underneath the desk where there's lots of dust. I think I've inhaled some of the dust. I apologise. Um, so yes, I think we got them at computer fair where we used to wander around and buy bare hard drives. Yeah. Um, so I've replaced them, and I've replaced them both with four terabyte hard drives, which has taken my storage up. So my external storage is now nearly 12 terabytes, which is great because I'm only using about six and a half at the moment. So there's lots of space available now. And the other one uh, has gone up to about seven terabytes ish for backups. Um, but uh, the price of hard drives has, has come down as tech, you know, becomes more common and there's more of it. Uh, the price comes down. The drives that I've got are twice the capacity of the ones I took out. Um, and I've actually gone for uh, Iron Wolf make, uh, which is Seagate still, but they're meant for NAS drives, NAS, Network Area Storage. Uh, they're meant for being on 24-7, basically. Um, and they have three years' worth of data recovery warranty, which I'd never heard of. But... It's quite cool because if I have any issues with the drive and they fail within three years, I can send it off to, to um, Seagate and they will restore my data for me. They'll, they'll grab all the data, which is a very expensive thing to do if you ever have to do that. <laughs> Never get to a point where your hard drive dies and you don't have a backup somewhere. That's just a horrible thing to do. So... If you learn nothing else from listening to this podcast today, make sure you have a backup of your hard drive somewhere. Another hard drive, other sort of storage system in the cloud. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you have a backup and make sure you test that backup. Make sure it works. Nothing worse than having a backup and that backup failing. That's yeah. even worse than not Definitely. having a backup. <laughs> Definitely. So yes, um, I've been upgrading tech this week. And it's something that uh, that you should look at, something that you should bear in mind and just look at the tech that you've got and see if there's um, anything that, uh, you know, if you've got hard drives, do you have backups? Have you tested them recently? Um, something I don't do, but you should, is have an off-site backup. Uh, I don't do that. I don't have an off-site backup. If our internet was better, I'd probably have something like Live Drive or if that's still going, you know, where, where you can basically back up your computer to the cloud. Um, but uh, any, anything you want to say about this? No, not really. I, I back up to Dropbox and that's about it. So you're, you're backing up to the cloud then? Yeah. yeah, which is great. Really important. So that's it. Please let us know what the microphone sounds like because we can't currently hear it. We won't know until it go until we check the live recording and see how it's come out. So hopefully it sounds good. Um, but uh, please let us know in the comments. Okay. That's everything from me. And me as well. Thank you for joining us. As always, you can like, share and subscribe. We're on YouTube and on Facebook. You can also go to our website, thisweekwith.co.uk, to find all of our past episodes. Until next week, Friday at 1pm, hopefully, assuming that all works out. We will see you then. Uh, my name is Gordon. I'm from Drayson Design. And I'm Taylor from The Creative Tinker. Goodbye. Bye.